Executive Report Number 1, I now ask Councillor Govindia to formally move the report. Finance and Corporate Resources OSC, Councillor Senior. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. If I could formally move Paragraph 1, uh, which is for information, but there are speakers. Councillor Boswell. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, big promises to increase free childcare places for disadvantaged two-year-olds are commendable and, of course, make great headlines. But with no guaranteed funding attached, this is a further example of fine words from this government on family policies with no clarity on how, when and if funding will actually be provided to deliver. The government itself states, we propose to work with local authorities to consider the approach to distribution of the early intervention grant in time to feed into decisions about allocations for September 2013. Yet this does not appear to have happened and it's just 15 months away. In Wandsworth, where there are currently, I believe, 102 free, full or part-time childcare places for disadvantaged two-year-olds, with a further 86 planned, the target of increasing this provision by a further 512 places to 700 by 2013 and increasing provision again by a further 700 places by 2014 will pose a big challenge to say the least. The um, so-called uplift grant of 495,000 falls far short of the um, estimated extra cost of these extra places which is 2.6 million and as your own report um, that we're just debating now from officers says there's currently no confirmed additional government funding approved. Um, scaling up early years childcare provision for economically disadvantaged two-year-olds is of course really laudable. For children living in problem families intervention as early as two is proven to increase life chances with free childcare providing a structure to their often chaotic lives and helping them at an early stage to interact with adults and other children, learn basic listening, speaking and sharing skills and it helps to prevent problems in later life. And on that I'm sure we all agree. But the cost of this provision and the impact on other services within this budget have not been thought through by this government. It's yet another example of the coalition rushing to undo tried and tested labour initiatives like Sure Start, which expanded instead of being cut, could, with creativity, imagination and some vision, provide the extra childcare places needed. Despite a commitment in the coalition agreement to protect funding for Sure Start, and uh, I'm pleased that to date this council has been able to do that, um, its budget has actually been merged into this new local authority early intervention grant which must in addition fund mental health in schools and youth kind programs and also programs around uh, teenage pregnancy. By approaching the budget in this way you risk setting service against service. Central government absolves itself of all responsibility and local councils are left to pick up the pieces with services fighting between themselves for funding. Applying a dog-eat-dog -dog market approach, where there will always be losers, to such essential services as state-funded childcare for our poorest benefits no one. And it actually doesn't make economic sense either. And nationally, over 30,000 mothers have given up work in the past year because they can't find affordable childcare. And that just ends up costing the taxpayer more. So I'd like to know what is this council doing about this obvious looming shortfall between the national government promise to scale up provision and the, com the confirmation of funding to actually do it. Have representations been made to central government to point out that their estimates of childcare costs at six to seven pounds per hour per child are well below the rate in inner city boroughs like Wandsworth where hourly rates are closer to 10 pounds and who will make up this funding shortfall? And what are the plans for recruiting and training the additional childminders and nursery staff who will be needed to provide the extra 512 places for next year and a further 700 for the following year? Will the council be forced to spot purchase private nursery childcare places instead? The time of easy headlines for this government is over. The opportunity to turn around disadvantaged toddlers' lives 
who through no fault of their own are born into problem families cannot be compromised by failure to ask difficult questions and demand answers. The government's own statement at the launch of the early intervention grant said, we want local authorities to be more transparent about how they're spending on children's services so that they can be held to account locally. I suggest you start by holding the government itself to account on its Councilor Boswell, please, could you wind up? Okay. That without added funding, they won't be able to keep. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Boswell. Um, Councillor Dawson. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, as this is one of the last debates during your mayoral year, it's just an opportunity to thank you, in fact, for the support you've given to children's services during that year. And in particular, the support you've shown to the corporate parenting ethos of this council and to children looked after. As always, you've led by example. It's also an opportunity to thank and to recognize the role of the early years team in the council and its partners, both in the private and in the voluntary sector, and the work of the early years development and child care partnership. And I will come back to that uh, partnership because they have looked at this issue and they have got some very real concerns about what is being proposed. Wandsworth's early years is a very highly regarded service. It's regularly consulted and involved in the development of national policy, um, both by the last government and certainly by the coalition government, which is therefore why I would hope that when officers and lead, the lead member do express concerns or reservations, as are noted in this report, that they're taken seriously because they're based not just on the practical experience of running the service, but also on a profound commitment uh, to securing the best interests of children and families. However, in these difficult times, we cannot lose sight of the fundamental economic ch challenges which are facing our nation. Um, nor should we forget, of course, that ringing endorsement uh, of his own government's economic legacy that was left by Liam Byrne, Labour's last Chief Secretary to the Treasury, to his successor, which read, of course, Dear Chief Secretary, I'm afraid to tell you there's no money left. Kind regards and good luck, Liam. Of, of, course, of course, that was only part of the story. Uh, perhaps Liam Byrne was actually right on that. Bow, Councillor Dawson, to speak, of please. Course, of course, this was only part of the story. Because it's the structural de deficit which massively increased under Labour which the coalition is trying to grapple with, but still the cost of servicing that deficit and that debt still rises day by day and month by month. The pace of increase may be slackening, but it certainly hasn't peaked yet. So there are tough times, and that's why the Prime Minister's commitment to deficit reduction can be, is to be welcomed, and why we've got to ensure that available resources really are properly and effectively directed to the support of the vulnerable. So you turn now to the early intervention grant and the early provision for two-year-olds. The proposals are to provide some 20% of two-year-olds as from September 2013, but increasing to 40% from 2014. Now the 20% reflects the numbers entitled to free school meals in primary schools. Ones with about 24%, nationally about 19%. So this criteria would at least enable outcomes to be tracked uh, during the youngsters' schooling, so we may have some merit, but the increase to 40 to 40% in 2014 is much more difficult to either explain or to justify, I feel. This expansion would imply in Wandsworth, as Councillor Boswell has already said, increasing to 700 in 2013 and 1,400 places in 2014. So the report rightly emphasizes the potential cost pressures and there are also issues about how the offer will be delivered, both in terms of the capacity of nurseries and childminders. But the Wandsworth's Early Year Partnership has also raised concern that this offer could reduce the use of the multi-agency children's centres by families with two-year-olds. And that is a prime user group of these centres, which do invaluable work, not just with the child, but with the families, and with parents and with carers. Maybe the unintended consequences of some rather well-meaning proposals might come back to um, haunt us in due course. If I can finally, Madam Mayor, quote Frank Field, 
Research shows that it's the home learning environment that is the crucial factor in determining life chances. He also argues that changing life chances is demonstrably possible in poor and disadvantaged communities through a focus on parenting, and he's putting that into practice in his own constituency in Birkenhead. Madam Mayor, underlying this report are several major and quite fundamental issues, both economic and social. We'll return to those in future reports, and therefore I commend the report to my colleagues. Thank you, Councillor Dawson. Councillor Speck? Thank you, Madam Mayor. I welcome all the work that's been done in recent years in providing early years education and childcare. And as has just been said, you know, a lot of work has been done. It's been good for our children, it's been good for many of the families involved, including the single parent families. It's provided a good start for our children. From sure start onwards, we've seen great strides in our provision, in particular for the more disadvantaged in our community. I welcome the fact that the extra early intervention grant is coming through, which should be putting more resources in to provide for two-year-olds in the economically disadvantaged circumstances, with the intention of implementing the proposed statutory entitlement for free early education places for two-year-olds. As said in the report, this uplift in the EIG is intended in line with government expectations to provide additional early education places for our disadvantaged two-year-olds in advance of it being coming a statutory duty later um, in 2013 and going on for 2014. The government again has put great publicity in putting forward promises that are family friendly but then not following through with the funding so they should now make sure that we do get the proper financing that, sh that should be there. Again, the book is being passed to the local authorities and local councils to make government proposals happen without the proper funds. And I would urge this council to lobby the government to ensure we do get the appropriate funding. Why is the government putting in, with great fanfare, proposals they believe will go down well with voters and in particular families, but then not fund them and expect us to carry the can? It's ridiculous, as intimated in the report, that our council services, vitally needed services, should suffer through lack of funds, and that with the Education OSC, we're trying to rob Peter to pay Paul all essential services, and many of them statutory. This is a time when we're having to do more and more with less and less money. The government doesn't seem to be very good at sums. We spent, according to the report, you know, 1.1 million in 2011 to 12 on provision of the early education and childcare places for the two-year-olds. And the government has announced an uplift of only 495,000 to the EIG. The autumn statement amount was a doubling of places from uh, to 2014 compared with 2013 and now. But 495,000 is not a double of mon the money, it's more like half the money extra. Um, we need to get that sorted. Now obviously this information on, on the grant hasn't come to the Education and Children's Services OSC yet. And we have changing uh, statutory duties and many new responsibilities coming through on various fronts, fronts in our committee and they're all important. Now it is what's being proposed regarding providing disadvantaged two-year-olds education and child care a good thing. Yes, I do believe it's so and the gov government obviously is saying so and that there should be the 20% entitlement from 13 and then doubling again in 14. But they're not providing the funding. It doesn't seem to be, it's not a spend, 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 but then they don't want growth, do they? It's a pretend spend, pretend spend, pretend spend. Does that mean we have to have imp pretend improvements? I hope not. The report rightly says there are concerns in the council that the entitlement we should be providing can only be met if sufficient funds are allocated. And I would also agree with the report that we can't provide that entitlement for six to seven pound per head per hour. Uh, it's just not being an educationalist. It's not possible. Um, so what are we going to do about it? We need to think very carefully. We've got, to, we've got to provide it. How are we going to do it? The other point I'm also worried about in the report is that it says that the funds are not ring-fenced. Does this mean the grant will not be spent on what's it intended for? 
Will this make it even harder further along the line? So if we're not planning extra places now, we've still got to do it later on um, when it's statutory. I actually am sure that um, we all want to provide the best possible service for the children, certainly you know, on the Education Children's Service OSC. So I would urge us all, and the council and the council officers, to lobby the government for the appropriate funds to provide the services, which the government has told us are important, to make sure we can do it. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Speck. Councillor Tracy. Uh, thank you, uh, Madam Mayor. And um, this is obviously an evening for welcoming um, new lead members, lead opposition members. Um, on committee, so I welcome uh, Councillor Boswell, who I understand is taking over um, as the lead member on children's services. Um, I, I ought to use this opportunity to um, comment um, on Councillor Gibbons, who I believe has been um, on the children's services or education committee since uh, once we took over education and his contribution has been invaluable. Uh, we have had some battles um, uh, in the past, but I'm very sorry uh, to lose him, but I do understand that he um, has other uh, things that he needs to pursue at the moment. Um, I'm looking forward to working with uh, Councillor Boswell and um, thank her very much for her first speech on the subject. Um, and I have to say there was very little that I disagreed with, which might surprise this council. Um, there is just one aspect of it that I disagree with, and I do fundamentally disagree with the government's, um, and I have to say it is the liberal side of the coalition, <laughs> coalition government that has proposed this, but I do actually fundamentally disagree with the fact that disadvantaged two-year-olds are better in institutional care than with their parents. Um, if the, the cost of this provision across the whole country, I understand, is something like three billion pounds. And if I've been given a proportion of that to put into uh, the children's centres and the Shore Start uh, to do parenting classes with those economically disadvantaged youngsters, which uh, according to um, our statutory duties for 2014 will be 40% of the population, which I mean is, is an enormous percent. Um, but if I'd been given just part of that money to put into parenting and helping those families um, to actually nurture their two-year-olds, I think it would have a long-term, far more beneficial effect than putting those two-year-olds into institutional care. And I feel quite strongly about it. However, we are where we are. Um, and uh, one of the provisions that um, we had been looking at um, very seriously was our, um, to increase the numbers is our childminding body. But then, of course, the government disappointed me again yesterday by saying that they are about to deregulate um, the rules regarding childminders so that they will no longer need to follow the um, early years uh, curriculum. Um, and although I can understand that um, because when they bought, the Labour government bought it in, it was very restrictive, um, they lost apparently half the childminders across the country. However, um, looking at it on a local level, although our local childminders did at first um, find it difficult to uh, implement, I think the standard of our childcare with our childminders has improved immeasurably. Um, which is why we were looking so seriously at being able to place some of our vulnerable youngsters in a more caring environment than an institutionalized nursery uh, provision. However, um, suddenly another uh, difficult area has um, opened up. I can assure my colleagues that I am lobbying very hard in every possible area, not just for the money to... Um, fund this, which of course is absolutely crucial, um, but for the way that it's implemented um, uh, completely. Um, I originally had no difficulty with the early intervention grant in giving us the freedom to spend our money as we actually felt um, best served our community, which is why we have been able to protect uh, the funding to the children's centres, which uh, colleagues in this chamber will know I support 100%. Um, but this is changing the game, really, by making it a statutory duty 
that we provide these places. Um, and so it is going to be an area that I'm sure we're going to have some very lively discussions uh, at committee. And um, if I uh, uh, feel necessary, I will enjoy taking my opposition colleagues with me to lobby the senior ministers on this topic. Thank you, Councillor Tracy. Ah. <laughs> yeah. The motion now before the Council is to receive a paragraph 4 of the Executive Report in relation to early intervention grant. Please indicate by a show of hands those for the motion. Is it total agreement? Oh, thank you. Therefore, the motion is carried. 